Hey guys, the objectives of today's video is to talk about the hydration of clay minerals as well as the diffused double layer. Now unlike with granular soils, clay soils are strongly influenced by the presence of water. The surface of the clay crystals are negatively charged which results in layers of water molecules surrounding each layer of clay. Water is held to the clay crystal by hydrogen bonding. This is what it looks like when the water bonds to the surface of the clay crystal. So we have our surface of the clay crystal here which is negatively charged. Here water molecules are sorry. Here water molecules are bonded to the surface of the clay crystal. And the hydrogen atoms are positively charged which attract to the negative charge of the clay surface. And in nature, the unbalanced charge of the clay minerals is balanced by the adsorption of cations such as sodium, calcium and magnesium. Recall that adsorption refers to the adhesion of atoms or molecules to a surface, essentially creating a film. Let's now move on to the diffuse double layer. The diffuse double layer refers to two parallel layers of charge that surround the object. I'll just quickly draw what this looks like. So let's just say we have our negatively charged surface of clay crystal again. And our water molecules which are adsorbed to the surface. In a diffuse double layer we have a second layer of water molecules which are loosely associated with the surface of the clay crystal. So that's our diffused double layer. And this first layer is adsorbed water. So the first layer comprises of water molecules absorbed to the surface of the clay particles and they're very strongly held there by chemical interaction. Whereas the second layer is composed of water molecules which are attracted to the surface by electrical charge. So the second layer is loosely associated with the object. The diffuse double layer helps to explain properties in clay such as plasticity and swelling. Clay particles in nature are almost always hydrated, so adsorbed water is normally not removed by oven drying. The thickness of the absorbed water is approximately the same for different clay particles, whereas the thickness of the diffused double layer varies only slightly for different clay particles. I'll just quickly draw the diffused double layer for kaolinite and montmorillonite. So let's say we have our kaolinite crystal here with a thin film of adsorbed water. This would be what the double layer of water would look like. Whereas for Montmorillonite, of course the crystal is a lot thinner. And this is our layer of adsorbed water and our double layer of water here. So that's Montmorillonite. Note that for Montmorillonite, the volume change due to water content sorry the volume change due to change in water content is huge and this results in large swelling and large settlement which are poor engineering properties so we look at this comparison between kaolinite and montmorillonite for example when we apply a load to a clay soil that is comprised predominantly predominantly of kaolinite crystals when the water disperses, the volume change isn't too dramatic. However, in the case of Montmorillonite, if the water from the, double di uh, from the diffused double layer were to disperse, the volume change would be very significant and this would result in very large settlements. I'll talk about specific surface in the next video. Hope this helps guys.